Hi everybody, welcome to our second session in the Rocket Room. This is our noon session and we have for you today DJ Butler who is presenting on 30 story lessons from one song. Uh, Dave Butler is going to present a fascinating new way to inform and inspire your storytelling by looking into the song Lily, Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts by Bob Dylan, one of my favorites. And so Dave's got 30 story lessons that we can apply to story creation just from this one song, and we're excited to hear it. For those of you who are watching, join us in the Discord, in our Discord server, uh, and jump on the chat, and we can chat and talk along as we are, uh, as Dave's going. Um, you can find that on the LTE.net website, and the link to Discord is just underneath the Conference at the Edge of the Universe link, right down in the middle of the page. And uh, we'll hope to see you in there. All right, Dave, take it away. Okay, so hey, I think I just shared my screen to Rocket Live. Are you guys able to see the screen? And do I need to click on the Rocket Chat to be able to see the chat? I probably do, don't I? That's right. Uh, yeah, very good. So I'm in the Rocket Chat. Uh, <laughs> greetings and salutations from Bruce Allred. Fantastic. All right, so, uh, and if I shrink my screen a little bit, you guys still see the presentation the same size, right? That's right. Yep, we're all okay. set. Perfect. Awesome. Hey, uh, my name's Dave. Um, fantastic, thank you, Bruce. Uh, or sorry, uh, oh, it is still Bruce. So uh, my name's Dave, and uh, I uh, will be using the chat. Um, and I expect that you guys will be using the chat too, because this is going to be a conversation. Hey, Mike. Uh, which is to say, if I get to my first question in like you know, uh, ten minutes in, and you guys say nothing, then we'll sit here for thirty-five minutes. Um, I want to talk about a, a single song, Bob Dylan's Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts. I did this presentation first for Dave Farland's Apex Writers. Um, I was invited to uh, give a list of things I might talk about. This was one of them. This was the one they chose. When I pitched it to uh, Nick and the team there, I said, oh, I think I can probably extract 15 lessons for a novel out of this song. That was before I'd actually sat down to do the analysis, and but we're well over 15. Uh, it is the answer. Now, I'm going to attach a file in the chat really quick here, uh, and and then I am going to sing the song. And and now we're going to find out whether I have to get approval uh, from uh, Ryan to uh, upload a file. Um, but um, what I want to attach, I want to attach the lyric sheet, because we're going to do a little bit of analysis, pretty fast, pretty fast, right? But we're going to do uh, a little bit of analysis of the song. So uh, here is a PDF uh, file uh, of the lyrics of Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts. I am now going to sing it because you sort of need to hear, hear this song to appreciate it. And it turns out I can play it faster uh, than the recording because I don't have to have all the dead time in the instrumental space. <clears throat> okay. And if you're thinking, Dave, the guitar might be a little bit out of tune. It's a Bob Dylan song. I have to be authentic. All right. So I'm going to sing this. It's a bit of a long song, about uh, about eight minutes. But as we're playing it, uh, I want you to think about this song as a piece of literature, as an as a novel, and say what's going on here in terms of themes and motifs and literary devices and literary techniques, because that then is what uh, we are going to talk about. The festival was over, and the boys were all planning for a fall. The cabaret was quiet, except for the drilling in the wall. For well, the curfew had been lifted and the gambling wheels shut down. Anyone with any sense had already left town. He was standing in the doorway. He was looking like the Jack of Hearts. He moved across the mirrored room, set it up for everyone, he said. Everyone commenced to doing what they'd been doing before he turned their hands. Up to a stranger and I asked him with a grin, and could you kindly tell me, friend, what time the show begins? And then I moved into the corner, face down like the jack of hearts. Backstage, the girls were playing five cards, stood by the stairs. Oh, Lily had two queens. She was open for a third to match her pants. 
Outside the streets were filling up and the window was open wide. A gentle breeze was blowing, you could feel it from inside. Oh, Lily called another bed and she drew up the jack of hearts. Big Jim was no one's fool, he owned the town's only time on my He made his usual entrance. Looking so dandy and so fine. With his bodyguards and a silver cane in every hair in place. He took whatever he wanted and he laid it all to waste. But his bodyguards and silver cane were no match for the jack of hearts. Rosemary combed her hair and she took a carriage into town. She slipped in through the side door, looking like a queen without a crown. She fluttered her false eyelashes, she whispered in his ear. Sorry, darling, that I'm late, but he didn't seem to hear. He was staring into space over the jack of hearts. Well, I know I've seen that face somewhere. Big Jim was thinking to himself. Maybe down in Mexico, burning a picture up upon somebody's shelf. And the crowd began to stamp their feet, and the house lights did dim. In the darkness of the room, there was only Jim and him staring at the butterfly. Just drew the jack of hearts. Lily was a princess. She was fair-skinned and precious as a child. She did whatever she had to do. She had that certain flash every time she smiled. She'd come away from a broken home, had lots of strange affairs. When men were at the walk of life, which took her everywhere, but she never met anyone quite like the Jack of Hearts. A hanging judge came in unnoticed. He was being wined and dined. A drilling in the wall kept up, but no one seemed to pay it any mind. It was known all around that Lily had Jim's ring, and then nothing would ever come between Lily and the king. And no, nothing ever would, except maybe the Jack of Hearts. But well, Lily started drinking hard and seeing her reflection in the night. She was tired of the attention, tired of playing the role of Big Jim's wife. Uh, she had done a lot of bad things, even once tried suicide. She was looking to do just one good deed before she died. She was gazing into the future. She was riding on the jack of hearts. Lily took her dress off. She buried it away. As the luck run out, she laughed at him. Well, I guess you must have known it would one day. Oh, be careful not to touch the wall. There's a brand new coat of paint. I'm glad to see you're still alive. You're looking like a saint. Well, down the hallway, footsteps were coming for the jack of hearts. A backstage manager was pacing all around beside his chair. There's something funny going on, he said. I can just feel it in the air. I went to get the hanging judge, but the hanging judge was drunk. As the leading actor scurried by in the costume of a monk, well, there was no actor anywhere quite like the Jack of Hearts. No one knew the circumstance, but they say that it happened pretty quick. And the door to the dressing room burst open, and the Colt revolver clicked. Big Jim was standing there, you couldn't say surprise. Rosemary beside him, she was studying her eyes. And she was with Big Jim, but she was leaning to the jack of hearts. Two doors down, the boys finally made it through the wall. 
Broke into the bank safe. Says they made off with quite a haul. In the darkness by a riverbed, they waited on the ground. Oh, one more member who had business back in town. I couldn't go no further without the jack of hearts. All the next day was a hang day. Guy was overcast and black. Jim like covered up, killed by a pen knife in the back. And Rosemary on the gallows, she didn't even blink. And the hanging judge was sober, he hadn't had a drink. Boy, the only person on the scene missing was the jack of hearts. And the cabaret was empty now. Something said, close for repair. She was thinking about her father, who she very rarely saw. She was thinking about Rosemary, and she was thinking about the law. But most of all, she was thinking about the Jack of all. All right. I know that was like a little bit long, but you got to hear the song. You got to hear the song. Um, let's talk about it. Now, again, I'm in the chat. I'm going to use the chat. I'm also advancing the slide deck. Um, hey, uh, the structure of this song is a ballad. What does a ballad mean? Does anyone know the term ballad? So the word ballad gets misused. Yeah, it is a story song, although there's something more, there's something additional to that. Uh, a, uh, a ballad is a, is a term for a kind of a traditional song form in, uh, in which the song consists of a series of identical verses. There is no chorus, there is no frame. It is a series of identical verses. And uh, it's used to report uh, history and news. Uh, it can be moralistic. Uh, that's an interesting question, Bruce, whether this one is. Um, now, now, this particular ballad has a, uh, you know, one feature is that uh, every verse basically ends with the same phrase, right? Uh, which has, uh, which has the, uh, the uh, virtue uh, or the feature of focusing your attention on who or what. What is, the, what is the song, as you're listening to it, what does the song seem to be about? What's catching your ear? Isn't it the Jack of Hearts? Isn't it every single verse ends on the Jack of Hearts, right? But that's but now there's but there's an interesting question. What what is the main plot of the story? What is the what is the external goal? Uh, that is driving the action. What is the main plot? It is. Is it in fact? Is it in fact the Jack of Hearts at all? Is he in fact in the main plot? So, uh, if you look at the lyric, right. Oh, I think that's right. I think he's a catalyst. Things happen because of him. The uh, but the main action, right? The main action is that this is about a robbery. This is it's that what we're what we're seeing most of the detail about, uh, or what the lens is focusing on, is is the what we would think of as subplots, right? Personal uh, plot, uh, subplot kind of confrontations. Uh, and there, the Jack. There, I agree. Jack of Hearts is a, is a catalyst. People make decisions, and they they move forward because of him. But the but the main plot is a robbery. Where does the where does the uh, where it's a heist? Where does the main plot first appear? It appears in the second line of the song. Right. Uh, the cabaret was quiet except for the drilling in the wall, um, which is which is then quiet. Right. That that kind of. We, we hear that, and there's nothing about it. 
uh, uh, for a while, except that later we get a line that says the drilling in the wall came up. No one seemed to pay it any mind. Or a little reminder, there's a drilling in the wall, but so many things are happening, right, that, uh, that, that we don't think much about it. And suddenly two doors down, the boys finally made it for, through, the, uh, through the wall. Now, you know, um, so look, the song structure does a couple of things here. Uh, the structure here matters. He could have written Dylan's Dylan even then, 1975. I think this was uh, Dylan was was a past master of, of verse writing. Could have chosen any song structure. He chooses a ballad. What does this What does this ballad do? Yeah, he hints at the he hints at the robbery, and then suddenly it happens. But even though he's telling you right in line two, there's a drilling sound. There's a drilling sound. The um, the structure of the verse makes you think, oh, the song's about the Jack of Hearts. I got to keep watching the Jack of Hearts. I got to keep watching the Jack of Hearts, which, by the way, puts you in the same exact position as all the other characters in the song, right? Uh, they got You got to keep watching the Jack of Hearts, and and the 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 monotonous nature of the the ballad. Monotonous meaning it's repetitive. It's the same structure over and over again. There's never a break where we go to a a chorus or to a bridge to change and say here's how you need to think about this but the effect of the ballad is it's piling up one thing after another and those those two things means dylan is directing he's misdirecting your attention away from the story to surprise you with the bank robbery then when it happens even though he's already told you even though he's already uh uh told you about it right so there there's there's the main point i'm not going to talk much to the lessons really because you know i mean we only have like uh, 30 minutes left at most. So I'm going to sort of leave you to think about the lessons. Uh, I'll show them, but I'm just going to talk more about the song. So there, this is the whole main plot right there. That's the whole main plot of the story. Uh, the cabaret was quiet except for the drilling in the wall. No one seemed to pay it any mind, including many listeners, right? And then, and then we really see it uh, when, they, uh, when they break through, clean out the bank safe. Um, all right, that's the uh, uh, that's the main plot, um, and uh, and Dylan fools us that the main plot is something else for for most of the song. Um, all right, so uh, what about other? So so we got a plant and a payoff here, right? In fact, we got a couple plants. Uh, we have the plant in the in the first verse, and then I think it's maybe six verses in or something. We go back and touch on it again. This is important enough. You know, Dylan doesn't want to cheat. He really wants to earn the surprise. So he's going to go ahead and plan and just tell you again, the drilling in the wall kept up. No one seemed to pay it any mind, right? And there's a little mischief there. There's a little humor. He, he's he's tricking you, to, but he's doing it to your face. Um, uh, there's the, this, These are plants, right? Uh, a couple of plants and then uh, and then a payoff uh, in in the actual... Like a shell game, that's exactly right. What other plants and payoffs do we have? I think we have we have probably more than I have listed, but I got several other uh, plants that then pay off later in the story. What are other ones that you saw? Let me throw out some some possibilities, some possibilities here. Okay, um, I, again, I don't think this is comprehensive. Uh, the uh, this is just some of them. We see Rosemary's knife, and by the way, I uh, saying Lily, even though it's Rosemary. But you were following along, so you saw in verse nine is about Rosemary, right? We see Rosemary's knife, and what is and 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 uh, what what's the context? She's just eating, right? It's innocuous, but here's this woman holding a knife and thinking uh, about you know long, uh, long-standing issues in her life. What's the what's the payoff? Where does the plant of rosemary's knife go to? Yeah, this is the the it goes to Big Jim. Awesome. Uh, this is the this is where all of the relationship moments climax, right? The relationship, this all the subplots climax basically in this one moment, where you know how does the relationship between 
Big Jim and Lily end up? How does the relationship between Rosemary and Big Jim end? How does the relationship between Rosemary and Lily end? How does the relationship between each of the two women and Jack end, right? It all ends in one moment when uh, Big Jim breaks in the, into the dressing room and he's got Lily there and he's he's got the Colt revolver in his hand and the Jack of Hearts... Uh, the Jack of Hearts, Bruce, seems to have no way out, but in fact, Rosemary is about to uh, stab him, right? Uh, Big Jim lay covered up, killed by a pen knife in the back, which, which is Rosemary. Um, you know, another fun plan is the Hanging Judge. Uh, the Hanging Judge comes in. Uh, he, the Hanging Judge came in unnoticed and was being wined and dined, right? Uh, but then when the stage manager goes to try to find him, uh, he's drunk, uh, right. Uh, so, uh, so the hanging judge has got personal problems and that's like an interesting kind of character moment too, right? He's a hanging judge. He's really vindictive towards criminals. How much is that driven? Uh, what's the connection between that and his drinking too much, right? Is he, is he, is he trying to ease his conscience or is he, or is he trying to take out his frustrations, the same ones that drive him to drink on those prisoners? That's entirely, that's all subliminal. The, um, but you got the plan of the hanging judge comes in, then he's drunk, and then there he is presiding at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, and, and the hanging judge is at a subplot movement too, right? The hanging judge is sober. Uh, he, he hasn't had a drink. I think also this one, Lily burying a dress, right? She doesn't, she doesn't pack it up. She doesn't fold it. She doesn't put it away. She buries a dress, burying a dress. Uh, and, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a very deep connection between, uh, the clothing, you know, clothing and the body and the idea that, well, here's a, here's a body being mar being buried. Uh, and, and by the way, whose body is it? Right. Well, I mean that, that foreshadows big Jim, but I think also maybe it foreshadows a different kind of death, a death and rebirth. Which is to say, uh, uh, Lily's own, right? If she's burying a dress, she's burying her own. She's burying her own body, in some sense, right? Um, and uh, and and she is the one. In fact, she's really the only one. Well, maybe the hanging judge. He's sober, <laughs> at least for now, right? Lily is the one we see in the last verse, who's putting away the trappings of fakeness. Uh, and, uh, and, and thinking about, uh, you know, some, some changes, uh, that are deeply rooted in her, you know, her experience or her, uh, uh, her personality. Now, look, the effect of all these plants is that, is that again, even though it sounds one thing after another, you go back and look at it and you, and you listen to it again and again. And the effect of them is it's like it's like putting rubber bands. Yeah, I think that's right. Her past, at least her past self, right? Because maybe Bruce, maybe she's um she may be in the last verse reconnecting with her past, or maybe maybe learning, maybe, maybe a way to think about this is she's burying her past self so she can see her past in a different way, right? Thinking about her father, who she very rarely saw. Um the effect of these plans, it's like it's like taking a rubber band and hanging it around a a peg early in the story and then a peg at the end of the story and maybe even pegs in the middle, right? So, so, uh, we hear the same themes come up again and again, and it holds, uh, holds the whole thing, uh, holds the whole thing together. Um, uh, all right. Uh, so subplots, we've kind of talked about this, um, again, uh, you know, a good song has a subplot, you know, this, this is kind of bunch. <laughs> uh, and I don't think this is all of them. This is at least some of the key subplots. Um, so Rosemary's, uh, you know, what's, what's Rosemary? So what is a subplot, by the way? You know, um, a subplot basically is either a character changes because of a decision or a character makes a decision not to change despite change circumstances right i mean that's it it's 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 a character deals with change one way or the other um in a, that is not the main plot the main plot most of the time needs to be something that's external it's between characters it's between the character and the world right 
Uh, it's between characters and and big external events. So uh, any character who who uh, either either changes, makes decisions to change, or makes decisions not to change when the facts are changing, that's a subplot. Uh, we have multiple. Here here are some of them. So uh, you know where does Rosemary start out? Uh, she's uh, she's tired of playing the role of Big Jim's wife. Right, that's the line. She's tired of playing the role of Big Jim's wife. It's a role. Um, we got a lot of motifs here. One of the motifs is acting, right? The role she is playing uh, is uh, Big Jim's wife. She's one of the two queens, and she's you know by his side. But uh, as they're as they're eating dinner at the theater, and Big Jim is looking at Lily uh, on the stage fascinating butterfly lily right rosemary is staring at her reflection in the knife uh and thinking about things so uh she's had a hard life uh we know she's capable of bad things because not only have bad things maybe happened to her she'd done a lot of bad things uh and wants redemption she wants to do one good deed uh what's the good deed she does well you know she saves jack Interesting question whether that really is a good deed or not. Maybe she's just abetting a bank robber. Um, but she saves Lily, right? She saves Lily from uh, from her own fate uh, by channeling her badness through her penknife uh, to Big Jim, uh, as Ryan said. Oh, there's a bunch of gambling, uh, yeah, motif going on. Absolutely. I got a slide about motifs. We'll get there. I think that's the principal motif, in fact, uh, is poker, is poker. Yeah, her good deed is she gets Lily out. I agree with that. I agree with that. Although, again, I think that we're naturally sort of, uh, the the ear uh, uh, orients us to think the good deed is saving Jack. I don't think that's it. I think she saves Lily. Um, Lily starts out, uh, she is a child, right? That's Lily's subplot. She is a child. Um, And uh, she has some kind of maturation she has to do. She uh, she had a broken home. She uh, left home, had lots of strange aff- affairs with men in every walk of life. Classically, by the way, this is, the, you know, uh, women who grow up with difficult relationships with their fathers often then have a hard time having good relationships with men as adults, right? So, uh, so uh, this is very true life. This is very true life psychology here. Um, and, uh, so that's her. So she's kind of, she's a child and she's kind of an orphan. She's a little, she's wounded and she's a little lost in the world. Right. And, uh, uh, Rosemary kills her, her broken father. Right. In fact, Jim, it's, and it's worth, it's worth a little bit of, uh, uh, a moment on this, right? Like what kind of, what kind of character is Jim? Well, this word, I'm going to suggest a word. It never appears, but we see some images of Jim. He's rich, Right. He owns the town's only diamond mine, <laughs> uh, uh, but he also hoards. He hoards the money. Uh, he also hoards the women, right? Uh, we have we have two major female characters in here, and they are both uh, within Jim's grasp. Uh, he took whatever he wanted, and he laid it all to waste. Now, look, if you think about fairy tales, okay, fairy tales mythology, what creature is it that takes all the gold? And also the virgins, even though it can't use either one. What is Jim? Jim is a dragon. That is exactly right. Jim is a Jim is a dragon, right? And which makes Rosemary the dragon slayer. Um, so uh so fantastic. So look, we have so we have this relationship between Jim and Jack, which we don't know what it is, but we know that it's something. Right? Because in the theater, uh J- Jim is sitting at the table and he can only look at Rosemary uh uh and and at, at Jack, right? And, and he says uh he says I've know I've seen that face somewhere, uh maybe down in Mexico or a picture up upon somebody's shelf. I love those lines, right? So if this is a Western, maybe down in Mexico, what, what does that suggest? I mean, did these guys maybe have a past where they're outlaws together, right? Or is this like, a, 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 you know, the, the Mexican War, right? A lot of the, a lot of the uh, officer corps of the Civil War basically cut their teeth fighting in Mexico under President Polk, 
right? So are these guys Mexican war veterans and now in like the 1860s or 70s? In which case, maybe we shouldn't think of them as like, you know, uh, 30-year-old uh, romantic hero protagonists, but but older guys, grizzled guys with a history. Um, and, or a picture up upon somebody's shelf is so wonderfully ambiguous, right? Are they relatives? Does Big Jim see a picture of Jack because they have some kind of connection? Or does a picture up upon somebody's shelf mean something like a wanted poster? Yeah, we don't know, but 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 they have uh, they have a connection. Jim, uh, or uh, yeah, Jim apparently remembers it, right? Because uh, remembering it uh, seems to be why he goes, ah, that's that guy. I bet he's with Lily. Goes and breaks into the dressing room, and we get to the uh, we get to the subplot. Uh, get to the subplot climax. So. Um, uh, I, I mean, we I, we have also a relationship between Lily and Rosemary is not even up here, right? Which seems to be, at, at least on Rosemary's part, it's envy, right? It has to be envy. She's sitting here staring her reflection in the eye while Jim, right? She's she's playing the role of the wife and he's up there. Yes, yeah, so well, it wasn't recent, right? There's not a close connection. There's something, Bruce, but it's back in history. It's, yeah. Um, there, there's some kind of envy or tension between Rosemary and Lily. Uh, and then Rosemary basically says, you know, we don't have any indication she runs. She basically is going to get out of this mess, uh, except that she's going to be hanged, but she's going to save this, the woman she feels envy towards, right? Because she knows that's just Jim's next victim. Uh, and then I think I mentioned this. I think maybe it's not as, maybe it doesn't amount to a subplot. I think maybe it does. The hanging judge sobers up, right? The events are so stunning that, uh, that, that, that he quits drinking. Um, so, uh, all right. Uh, do, do, ah, let me, let me, wait. I, I'm not, I'm mostly ignoring and letting you look at the sort of lessons, but I will say this, um, because it's huge in, in our, in the best stories. Right in a really tightly crafted story, resolution of the main subplots allows for the resolution of the plot, and that happens here. At least, uh, well, one Jack is the distraction, right? Jack goes in because he knows Jim's attention is going to be on him, and it's going to get you know, Lily uh, uh, appears to also know him, right? And he knows it's going to cause chaos, he's the distraction that allows the bank robbing. But but really, uh, Rosemary killing Big Jim is how Jack is how Jack gets away, and and the 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 bank robbers couldn't go no further, right? That's the line. They couldn't go no further without the Jack of Hearts. Their plot can't succeed unless Jack gets out. Uh, Jack gets out because Rosemary uh, kills Jim. Now motifs. Okay, uh, someone was saying, "Hey, poker." Uh, yeah, poker is a, a huge motif. Tell me about the poker motif. How do we see this? Shows up multiple times. So, um, I mean, first of all, Jack of Hearts is a card, right? He's a card. Uh, yeah. Oh, the whole story is a game. I like that. The Jack of Hearts himself is a card. Are other people cards? Well, Big Jim is described as the king, right? Nothing would ever come between Lily and the king. He owns the only t the town's only diamond mine. Big Jim appears to be the king of diamonds, right? Uh, the, the early on, Rosemary, uh, 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 Lily, it's Lily had two queens. She was hoping for a third to match her pair. Now, on its face, that's the game, right? She's got a pair of queens. That's Lily and Rosemary. They're, 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 they are a live poker game. Yeah, she had two queens looking for a third to match her pair. I also like this line, right? Right up front, uh, Jack moves into the corner, face down like the Jack of Hearts, right? So this tells us, so so yeah, some chance, but there's another, there's another thing going on here, Amy, right? Which is, um, I mean, there are different kinds of poker. But if Jack is face down, he's the whole card. He's the he's the card no one is able to see, which means the way the game is going to end is the, is a moment of revelation. What's the card you got? Show me your whole card so I can see what your hand is. Right, uh, and and the story ends in a moment of revelation when Jim. It takes him a while. He remembers it's that guy. He'll be in the dressing room. Runs in there. Lily uh, Rosemary has a different revelation. Right. Tired of being playing the role of Big Jim's wife, 
bam. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so poker is, is the big motif. Makeup addresses. Uh, we already touched a little bit on uh you know lily burying her dress away rosemary combs her hair and and, and takes a, a carriage into town she flutters false eyelashes look at the last scene right by the way jack's been pretending too right jack's been maybe this is getting ahead of ourselves but but actors and acting jack is an actor too everybody's in disguise here except maybe jim uh and uh because the dragon doesn't have to be in disguise he is what he is uh but uh, the last verse, right? Lily's taking the dye out of her hair. Uh, uh, she's she's done. She's done with pretending, right? The pretending is all over. We've had the revelation. Uh, we've had the moment of truth. Um, other kind of motifs. Uh, uh, there's there's the weather, right? Uh, uh, is is uh, is a bit of mo motif. Uh, the uh, you know the the fe the festival's over and and there's a, there's a breeze coming. It feels like a storm. Uh, is coming in uh, the buildings themselves. We get this discussion about you know uh, how the buildings need need a, a coat of paint. Um, uh, now Rosemary's eyes. I like Rosemary's eyes uh, because we see them first of all. Well, I mean maybe they're implied when she's combing her hair. She'll, oh no, flooding her false eyelashes. Right. So verse five. Rosemary's eyes are false. Uh, verse when well, she's turning them on Jim, verse nine, she's turning them on herself, right? She's drinking hard, seeing her reflection in the knife. Uh, and and then they come up again, right? They come up another time. Uh, and these aren't, these aren't exactly a plan or a payoff, they don't pay off in a plot, it's just an image that comes through, uh, and uh, uh and 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 changes, right? Because we see them at the end, uh, Rosemary's on the gallows, uh, she didn't even blink. Oh, no, sorry, I skipped one. When Rosemary comes in into the dressing room, right, uh, uh, Rosemary beside, right beside him, study in her eyes, study in her eyes, being really careful where her eyes go uh, so as not, as not to betray herself. And then at the end, uh, Rosemary on the gallows, she, she didn't even blink, right? Um, so, and then the actor is an acting thing. And I, I love this one. So, uh, the leading actor her, her, hurries by in the costume of a monk, right? So this is verse 11. The backstage manager is pacing around. He doesn't know what's wrong, but something's wrong. Uh, the leading actor hurried by uh, in the costume of the monk. There was no actor anywhere better than the Jack of Hearts. Now, uh, and, and, and then look, uh, uh, in fact, the, the verse before, um, you got a diamond, that's awesome. The verse before Lily has a comment on Jack, right? So we we know that Jack and Lily know each other. This is the be careful not to touch the wall. There's a brand new coat of paint. So is the whole town wearing makeup, right? Um, and uh, he says, "I'm glad to see you're still alive. You're looking like a saint." Jack is the leading actor, right? The leading actor is in the costume of a monk. Jack is in the Jack looking like a saint. He's in the leading. He's in, he's the leading actor in a costume uh, of a saint, right? Um, which uh, hey, I like the way these add to plot. They characterize. They you know add to the mood. So um, that's interesting. Wealth versus relationships. Yeah. So maybe. So maybe. I mean, if you're going to go down the road that Bruce now my, now Dylan never states a moral, right? Um, and may, maybe, uh, if you were going to extract a moral, maybe it would be sort of the moral of the dragon, right? Beware the corrupting, uh, power of, of, of abundance of too much wealth. Um, all right. Point of views. Hey, what points of view do we get in the song? Let's talk about like points of view and, and get into the question of like, who is the hero here? Right. And that's, that's an interesting question. Cause again, I, I, I think the song kind of tricks us a little bit. Um, there can be multiple morals. And by the way, Amy, I think maybe that's another point, right? Not stating a moral leaves the reader, the listener open to go every time potentially, right? And as your own life circumstance changes to empathize with a different character, see a different aspect of the song, draw a different moral. Um, ab absolutely right. I think there's a lot of power in not saying, and that's why you shouldn't blah. Right? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. 
So uh, we get a lot of points of view. We get Rosemary's, right? Uh, we get Rosemary uh, when she's combing her hair. We get Rosemary. I don't think people are, are, are realizing she's looking at herself in the knife. I think, I think that's just, we're seeing Rosemary's point of view. Uh, we, uh, we get Lily's point of view, uh, for example, at the end, right? Uh, everybody else seems to be gone. Uh, and, and in fact, um, whether they're gone or not, we know it's Lily's, uh, point of view. Cause we hear what she's thinking. She's thinking about her father who she very rarely saw thinking about Rosemary, thinking about the law, right? Uh, by the way, what she never says, what law? Right, never says what law. That's that's like just a real interesting. Maybe on that point of morals, right? What is what is the law? Lily is thinking about after all of this. Um, we get Jim's point of view, right? I know I've seen that face somewhere. Big Jim was thinking to himself, uh, maybe down in Mexico or a picture up upon somebody's shelf, and we get that he's yeah. The consequences of Rosemary, yeah, maybe that's right. Um, but Amy, to your point, if you listen to the song again in a year, maybe you would think about a different something else here, right? Maybe something to do with Rosemary or Lily's uh, relationship with her connection with her memory of her father. Um, maybe not. Maybe, maybe she's thinking about the need of law, right? That's some of the genius and the magic of the song. So like Jack, right? Jack shows up and it catalyzes change, right? The catalyst is the thing that causes everything around it to change in a chemical reaction. You put the catalyst in, everything else reacts, the catalyst comes out unchanged, right? That's Jack. Maybe the song is also uh, a, a, a little bit uh, uh, a catalyst here. So, um, hey, we don't get Jack's point of view. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, he was with, he was, yeah. Uh, he was with, uh, very good. Yeah, could be. So they they certainly or or the other way around, right, Magnus? Because because whatever the connection is, it makes Jim a realize that Jack's going to go after Lily, and b uh, he wants to kill Jack, right? He doesn't he doesn't show up prepared to discuss. The the door bursts open and a Colt revolver clicked, right? Um, by the way, you know on, on that point, Magnus, we should I think consider the possibility that maybe Dylan doesn't know what the previous connection between Jim and Jack is. And maybe, again, that is more powerful, right? Or maybe he does, I mean, you know, maybe he knows, but he's not going to state it because that would make it too obvious. Or he doesn't know, and either way, there is a, there's a clear structure and a clear story, and we get the point, but there are voids that our imagination goes into. Right. See, there's like we're we're drawing multiple lessons out of the song that aren't even on my slide deck. This is this is so complex and so masterfully done. There's just so much to it. So um, we never get Jack's point of view. Right. We never get we get the, we get the two women. And I think that helps us to really sympathize with them. I mean, if, especially Rosemary, maybe. Right. Uh, which is great because we really sympathize with her. And then she's going to do objectively a a bad thing, even though the narrator says one good deed, right? She's going to go, she's a murderous man. Um, it's not self-defense. Um, but the, the choice of point of view here uh, creates surprise, right? Allows the reader to be surprised. This story from Jack's point of view would be gigantically different. We would know about the bank robber. We would know about the previous connections between the people. We would be, the 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 um, suspense, the uncertainty would come from questions like, oh, is Jim going to figure it out in time? Oh, can, can the boys make it in time, right? Um, and instead of asking a suspense question, we get a series of revelation questions by avoiding Jack's point of view. Um, hey, I think there's a, here, uh, here's my view. I won't even hide the ball. I don't think Jack is a hero. I think he is a catalyst. Why do we, but we kind of root for him, don't we? Why Why do we kind of root for him even though, I mean, he's an actor. There's no actor better than the Jack of Hearts. You're looking like a saint, implying you're not. He's robbing the bank, right? He goes in there. Uh, yeah, the, again, the story might not be attractive from Jack's point of view because we might be like, oh, this guy's kind of scum, <laughs> right? May maybe, maybe. Um, what are some reasons why we root for Jack? Now, I'm conscious that we're down to like, within five minutes, I got to figure up. So I'm going to maybe maybe kind of uh, speed up a little bit here here are some examples okay first of all 
How do we see him up front? He's by the first thing he does. He walks in, uh, set it up for everyone. He said he buys everybody a drink. He walks up to a stranger and he asked him with a grin. Hey, can you kindly tell me friend what time the show begins? Um, he's, uh, and, and, and by the way, so a, he's friendly, but B he's cracking jokes because he is the show, right? There's irony in him and that's charming and funny. Um, by the way, the women respond positively to him, right? So the point of view characters like him, that tends to make us like him. The men are loyal. They don't try and abandon him. They can't go without him. They hunker down on the riverbank and they wait. And I think maybe one of the biggest reasons is that, uh, is that Big Jim is clearly bad. Oh, Jack of Hearts. I like that. The mere name right? The image has some romance to it. And I think the fact that the, uh, that, that Big Jim is clearly bad, that he's the classical dragon, sets us up to root for Jack thinking he's the dragon slayer, although in fact he's not. Although in fact he is not. Um, all right. Um, there's some great examples of showing rather, oh, I, oh boy, in Anglo-American culture, are you kidding? Robin Hood and Billy the Kid, there is absolutely something about rooting for the name. Or, you know, good fellas. Um, we got some great showing rather than telling of emotion, right? Rosemary's drinking hard and seeing her reflection in the knife. We don't really, you know, that line right there tells us she is thinking about violence. She's upset, right? The back page man, stage manager has a chair, could be sitting. He's up, he's pacing backwards, uh, back and forth, right? The, 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 the uncertainty uh, or the fear uh, or maybe the loyalty of the of the the robber band that has to wait. Um, this uh, this moment when the the house lights dim and Jim and Jack both stare at Lily. Right, uh, we're we're showing emotion rather than telling it, uh, and that's uh, that's very that's strong and that's that's focusing. You get there by focusing on physical external details. Um, there is humor in the song, right? Um, so, uh, you know, Lily called a bet and draws up the Jack of Hearts is a joke between the between the author uh, and and the listeners. Um, I like this long big G this line. Big Jim was no one's fool. He owned the town's only diamond mine. As if there are towns that have multiple diamond mines, <laughs> right? Right. The town's only diamond mine. So the the narrator has got kind of a wise cracking. Uh, uh, grin as he's joking with the uh, with the audience. Hey, we got uh, we got metaphors right. Uh, Lily, we we we're in, it's implied Lily's an orphan, but she's also described as a butterfly, a creature that is beautiful uh, but also fragile uh, and and ephemeral, and a, and a creature that metamorphoses. And so we're going to see uh, Lily's metamorphosis. So uh, we already talked about this. Jack is the catalyst that doesn't necessarily mean, make him the point of view character uh, or the protagonist or a hero uh, or anything else. Um, and I'm going to end right there because we're at time. Um, thank you all very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. Thanks so much, Dave. We appreciate you being on with us. And thanks, everybody, for participating in the chat, too. It's been wonderful. Um, we are going to sign off now and switch over in about 10 minutes. We'll start up with our next session. Uh, so everybody go grab a drink and meet back then. Thank you guys. Oh, thanks, Amy.